we are all set for the big election of the post of the Congress president, which has actually been announced after nearly two decades. Congress, as you know, is facing really an existential crisis. And this presidential election for the party posts is going to be an attempt by the party to resuscitate itself. As far as the details of the election are concerned, the last day of filing the nomination is September 30th. By 8th of October, you can withdraw your nomination. 8 to 16 is the election campaign. October 17th is when the election will take place or the votes are going to be cast. And October 19th is the day we will know who is the next Congress president, meaning the results will be declared. Of course, as usual, the cacophony is already building up to ask Rahul Gandhi to put forth his nomination again and come forward to take up the mantle of becoming the Congress president once again. However, the 52-year-old leader is not at all keen to become the Congress president as of now of what we've heard last. And Sonia Gandhi, as we know, is already ailing and therefore is not really in a position to take up so much organizational your work. There are a lot of states which have been actually asking for and passing resolutions for Rahul Gandhi to come forward. One is Rajasthan, one is Bihar, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and the like. However, it seems that if Rahul does not actually eventually make up his mind to become the Congress president or at least nominate, uh, file the nomination for it, the battle is, seems to be set between Ashok Kehlot and Shashi Tharoor, two very, very different leaders, and I'll talk about that. As far as Ashok Kehlot is concerned, we know he's already the Rajasthan Chief Minister, and the party has the new rule of one party, one post, which means suppose Ashok Kehlot were to become the president of the party, then he would have to give up the post of Chief Minister of Rajasthan, something that he'll not particularly be very keen to do because he's got it the hard way and he's really had to fend off Sachin Pilot who was snapping at his heels has been wanting to become the chief minister himself and therefore Ashok Gehloth if he has to give up the post of the chief minister of Rajasthan he will want a person whom he can control completely and it also seems that he doesn't want a Gujar or a Meena leader to take over because they have fair amount of vote bank strength there and Sachin Pilot who himself is a Gujar leader says that he will set off he's been warning that he'll set off a Gujar agitation against Ashok Kehloth or against the party if he is not given a chance again because you know Sachin Pilot wanted to become the chief minister and he was not given this chance now if Ashok Gehloth becomes the Congress president and he gives up the post then Sachin Pilot thinks that he rightfully needs to own it right now again for the record Sachin Pilot right now is with Rahul Gandhi on the Bharat Jodo Yatra and therefore I'm sure there's a lot of conversation going up on there about who could take up the mantle in Rajasthan in Jaipur suppose Gehloth were to go the other way However, Gehloth seems to be, as I said, wanting a non gujar or a non mina leader and therefore somebody like a B.D. Kalla could be another choice or a compromise choice. Uh, besides C.P. Joshi, who's also a very well-known figure uh, within the party and who could also be offered that post. Besides that, uh, Shashi Tharoor is the other person in contention. And Shashi Tharoor, as you know, is more of a pin-up boy. He's not such a person with grassroots uh, support or that kind of administrative skill as um, Ashok Kehloth. Because Ashok Kehloth is an out-and-out -out politician, whereas Shashi Tharoor has been a diplomat. He's been with the UN. He's more of a person who's a public relations person. He's a very well-spoken person. And he's uh, absolutely the face of Congress as far as giving bites in television debates, etc. Whereas Ashok Gehloth is that solid, quiet guy who sits at the back and does the work, which is what has actually taken Congress through these elections in Rajasthan. We he's been able to deliver victories because of the kind of grassroots administrative skill that he's been able to uh, deliver. So two very, very different personalities. Besides that, Shashi Tharoor is also a person who's been a part of the G23 within the Congress, who've been actually 
uh, voicing their dissent about the state of affairs within the Congress and have been expressly saying that there is a need to rejuvenate the party. It seems that Shashi Tharoor also met Sonia Gandhi and had sought her blessings for the post for Sonia. Gandhi is somebody who is trying to stay very neutral. In fact, the entire Gandhi family saying they will not want to protect anybody from their side and they would like to be a neutral party who witnesses the election between these two people or anybody else who files the nomination from here on. Besides that, just to give you a little bit of a historical perspective, these elections of the party have been very, very long due. And that is why one of the things which happened in the Congress, Chintan Shivar, was that the new president must implement all the changes and the things to rejuvenate the party within what is called the Udaipur Declaration to be implemented within 100 days of taking over. The last election which took place for the post of Congress president was in 2000, which is like 22 years back where the contest was between Jitendra Prasad and Sonia Gandhi and no guesses for who won that. It was a real walkover and the last known Gandhi person who actually was the president of the Congress was Sitaram Kesri who was actually humiliated, literally humiliated where Sonia Gandhi came back in a coup in 1998 as the uh, party president and Sitaram Kesri was of course totally sidelined after that. As far as the challenges which are concerned about uh, the per person who will take over as the president, the Congress has been in a perennial state of decline and that's absolutely no uh, secret at all as far as politics of this country is concerned. To be able to revive the party would be the first challenge. To be able to keep the flock together would be a second challenge, especially in the string of very high profile exits which have taken place in the Congress party. So how do you keep the flock together of whatever is left of it is going to be another challenge. The other part is uh, that the party has to build organizationally because the lack of organizational infrastructure the party has been facing string of defeats in the assembly elections besides having of course lost the general elections but even in the assembly elections they have really uh, not been performing well at all and therefore there is a lot of work which is set out for the new Congress president besides the big one and that is the 2024 general election where this party will have to figure out answers on how they need to take on on the BJP and the organization strength, the financial strength and the administrative prowess of people like Amit Shah who were absolute aces in winning elections and taking on the might of the cult figure that Narendra Modi today is in this country and that's going to be a huge task cut out for the new Congress president.